Hello, I'm Rupert van der Vel, and today on the channel we're going to be looking at some of the greatest street photography pictures of all time. When selecting these pictures, I was thinking not only what is it about them that I like, but why do they stand out? The common ground is that they're all from recognised street photographers, and I think they all have some real significance to the genre. Whether that's because of the subject matter, the style, the technique, or a combination of all these things, they're all images which I think have something really special about them. And hopefully there'll be some surprises there too. Now this is my list and these are pictures that mean something to me. And of course they may not mean that much to you. Of course selecting just 10 pictures in a list like this is extremely difficult. But it's not necessary to list every great picture in the world to learn what makes a great one. I hope this video is going to generate lots of opinion and feedback. So do let me know what you think in the comments. So let's get started and look at our first picture. During the 1980s, Magnum photographer Harry Dryard made several trips to North Africa to photograph its colours and landscapes. He took this picture in Morocco in 1988 and later published it in a book about the country. Dryart used the Cibachrome process where a colour transparency is enlarged directly onto reversal colour paper for its saturated colours and deep blacks, which he found more sensual, as we can see in this picture. Dryart believed that a photograph properly exists when printing gives it form, something I wholeheartedly agree with. There is a weight and an edginess present here. Partly it's the colour that produces this, but it's also the time of day and the position of key elements. The hooded figure, the dog, the front of the car, with the bright colours swing round about and market stalls, you can imagine this place to be one of busting activity at another time of day. But here there is an air of tension, like something is about to happen, almost like something is about to get out of control. It's great framing. The vertical pole draws our attention to the motionless figure. And I love the multiple layering too. There is great depth to this image. Next up at number nine is... Street photography is the genre that has just about everything. Beauty, drama, excitement, humour, and sometimes the really bizarre. So even though my own pictures aren't really influenced by the more comical and curious side of life, I do take great pleasure in seeing what those who can find it do with it. This picture from Melanie Einzig, taken in New York in 2000, nicely sums up the sometimes odd nature of the streets, with this gathering of six characters on a street corner. A dog, a hugging couple, a man who looks like he might not make it out of the frame, a parrot and its owner. It's quite an ensemble. Einzig came across this scene on the way to work one day, but she was clearly alert to the situation, and that's a lesson to learn from. You never know what's going to be waiting around the next corner. Let's move on to number eight in the list. Magnum photographer Trent Park has said that it's not enough for him to just go out on the streets and shoot people. He needs to be trying to push the medium of photography as well. Well, that's a message for all of us, I would say. And the picture I have chosen of his is a good example of why. In this image from his Dream Life series, it looks like a city dweller has suddenly been transported to the Amazon rainforest. It's a fantastic use of the misty morning Sydney light, whether the effect is natural or not. The hint of city building is a nice intrusion on this otherwise dreamlike event. Black and white is the right format here, as we focus tonally as well as from the subject itself. A worthy inclusion in the top 10 list. Time to move on and look at number 7 in the list. Alex Webb is a photographer whose work I absolutely love. His pictures are often vibrant and complex and very different to my own style. There is so much we can learn about street photography by looking at them. He has said that the places he travels to might seem a little strange for street photography, but that he feels contain intriguing socio-political tensions and clashes of culture. Well, this picture is right up my street. The large areas of shadow decorated by the coloured light catching parts of the structure dominate the composition, but draw our attention to the two figures in close conversation in the area below. The lines of shadow in the space in front of them echo the patterns of corrugated roofing on each side above. The semi-abstract nature of this image is all in the shape, light and silhouettes of the characters, who are a fine example of the human form within the urban environment. The shapes of coloured light add a delicate but definite vibrancy to the scene. It's amazing how so little of something can add so much. I've talked about this in my video on using ornamentation and decoration in our pictures, which you can find on the channel. 
Anyone familiar with my work will know that I'm not particularly a fan of crowded street scenes. As I explained in a recent video on developing a photographic style, mine is based on a more minimalist approach. However, I can still appreciate the work of those photographers whose skill is in depicting the hustle and bustle of life on city streets in an interesting way. So selecting this image from Joel Marovitz was a no-brainer really, because it ticks that box with added drama and humour. Taken on Fifth Avenue in New York City in 1975, it's a brilliant use of light and available props. Working an object like this stuffed tiger in a shop window into an everyday street scene is about as creative as it gets. A real dichotomy, but the way the colours of the tiger's fur and those of the coats of the passers-by connect is wonderful. The woman wearing the headscarf even has a fur collar. It comes together beautifully. Great framing too, with the man and woman entering the scene from the left, helping to balance things out. We're now entering the top five in the list. Like many photographers of the time, Ernst Haas made quite a few reflection images whilst experimenting with the depth of colour he was able to achieve. Most were taken at street level and depict abstract scenes of New York City life in all its complexity. But for the number five position in the list, I have chosen one taken from many floors up in a tall building, which looks down on his normal shooting position. What a great way to show off the vibrancy of city life back in the 1950s. By using the windows and the blue blinds of the building opposite, he has not only created a semi-abstract view of the city street and the colours of the passing cars, but he has brought the otherwise uninteresting face of the building to life. I love that there are two dark-suited businessman types passing below to add a little perspective. An extremely creative and unusual shot. Moving on to number four in the list. Many of you might expect to see a reflection shot from Saul Leiter as my choice of a picture by him, but I've gone for another instantly recognisable shot with just as much poetic beauty. Although much of his work set him apart from his contemporaries because of his use of colour film, this shot is almost monochrome with only the brake lights of the car confirming that it's not. This is a wonderful shot of pedestrians battling against a snowstorm, but the real genius is in the framing using the canopy to block out the sky, which would have lessened the impact, helps to draw our attention to the drama below. It's a good example of negative space being used to great effect. I think the tear in the fabric of the canopy sort of mirrors that of the figure in the front of the picture, and it adds a little extra detail and balance. Superb! If you look on YouTube, there are many photographers who have emulated Saul Leiter's style, and given his wonderful creativity, it's no surprise. We're now going into the top three. Ray Metzger's work has had a big influence on me. His bold black and white pictures, graphic in structure, have stood him out as one of the big hitters of the mid 20th century street photography scene. This picture from 1963 is one of the many he produced in Philadelphia, a city he made his home and its streets a frequent subject for his photography. With the emphasis on light and shade, this sublime image of a lone sailor with his kit bag slung over his arm, shot against the backdrop of City Hall in deep shadow, is typical of his work. The sailor appears like a performer on a spotlit stage, almost balletic in quality, yet with a cool nonchalance to his demeanour. It's brilliant and worthy of a position in anyone's top five. In second place in the list of my top 10 street pictures of all time is now, street portraiture, this full-on, isn't something I would ever consider doing on one of my photo walks, and that's one of the reasons I've chosen this next picture. But the main reason that it features in my top 10 list is because it's such a great moment for the camera. William Klein's portrait of a young boy on the Upper Broadway in New York, pointing a gun directly into his camera, is priceless. The expression on the boy's face, erupting with rage, perhaps mimicking gangsters of the time, is straight from the acting school of very angry. The thing is, it all looks very natural, although the other boy looks on a little shy and perhaps a bit embarrassed, not really knowing how to respond. It's a great street moment, and most of us can only dream of delivering a portrait like this, whether we're looking for it or not. So we reach the final image in my top 10 list of favorite street pictures.
Of course, there has to be a Cartier-Bresson picture in my top 10 list of favourite street pictures, and it's no real surprise to find it at number one. The tricky question for me was which one was it going to be? I've made a video looking at one of his early images taken in Spain, which you can find on the channel. And today in the top 10 list comes another from Spain, taken in the same year, in which he really hits the bullseye. This amazing picture was taken in a ball ring in Valencia in 1933. Places like this were accessible to photographers carrying small cameras, such as Cartier-Bresson's Leica. This image is a great example of Cartier-Bresson's nose for a great picture opportunity, something every photographer should aspire to. The attendant on the right watches the action inside the arena through a small window in the door, which being slightly open adds an abstract feel to the shot. This is added to by the single lens of his glasses catching the light. He would have recognised the correct framing and positioning of each character in order to balance the shot. The slightly surreal nature of the composition was in keeping with the artistic mood of the time, and the combination of elements results in a sort of collage effect. Many photographers have adopted this approach in their street photography, and Cartier-Bresson's work has left a lasting legacy. Well, there you have it, my top 10 street pictures of all time. These images have had a big influence on me over the years and continue to do so. There is so much skill and creativity on show in every one of them, and I believe that we can all learn from a close study of them and the photographers who took them. As I said earlier, I'm sure you'll have your own choices which will be very different to mine, but do let me know what you think in the comments. That's it for this video. Please hit the subscribe button, and if you want to help support the channel, please buy a copy of my book, Fine Art Street Photography, How to Turn the Urban Environment into Dramatic Street Pictures, which is available on Amazon. The link is in the description to the video below, or you can go to my website, www.rupertvandervelle.co.uk. Also, you can follow me on Instagram, at Rupert Vandervelle. Thanks for watching.